Today we're flying with Norwegian Airlines from Paris' primary airport, Charles de Gaulle, departing from Terminal 1. Terminal 1 has a unique multi-tiered circular design with different levels for check-in, baggage check, and security that can be a bit disorienting to navigate, so do leave some extra time for your first visit to this terminal. When you fly Norwegian economy, even if you only have carry-on bags, you do need to stand in line to have your bags weighed, measured, and tags to make sure that they conform to the strict guidelines Norwegian provides. We ended up making it to the gate just before boarding by the time we got through the bag line, so be aware this does take some time. Billy here with Gilbert Travels, December 29th, so this is my last flight of the year with Norwegian back in economy to Florida, to Fort Lauderdale here from Paris. So gonna be actually in the exact same aircraft, the 787-9 Greta Garbo tail. So uh, we were in this plane premium economy a few days ago. Now we're heading back in economy. We'll show you what the difference is like. All right, see you on board. Do be aware that security happens right at the gate. So while there are restaurants earlier in the process, don't get any drinks that you intend to bring on board the flight. However, they do provide a store at the gate so you can get some things to bring on board. Okay, so before we go any further, in order for you to follow along with my review, I think we need to discuss Norwegian's fare structure first. Stick with me, as the rest of the review will make a lot more sense after watching. Norwegian is a low-cost carrier, so they include almost nothing in their base low fare ticket. But you can buy bundled upgraded fare classes, or you can build your own experience by adding a la carte to this base fare. When we flew last year, the low fare included an underseat and an overhead bag, but no checked bag. This has now been restricted even further to just one underseat bag, which must be a very small 30 by 38 by 20 centimeters, making it almost impossible now to fly long haul with Norwegian without paying some sort of bag fee on their most basic fare. Depending on the price for your trip, upgrading to the low fare plus may make sense as it provides more of a standard mainline carrier level experience with an overhead and checked bag included, standard seat selection, as well as meals. In our case, we started with a base fare of 365 US dollars purchased through their local website with 3,290 Norwegian NOC. From there, we paid about six US dollars to buy priority boarding so we could be sure to have our bags at our seats and 25 US dollars to select standard seats. To bring on board cabin baggage under their current fare structure, you'd now be paying an additional $12. But if you can get away with it, that's still an easy choice compared to the maze of fees they charge for a checked bag. In our case, this would have been a hefty $65. We also skipped the $40 charge for two prepaid meals, opting instead to see what we could rack up by ordering on our own from the onboard snack and drink menu. So really it's quite complex, but hopefully that's a concise description so we can follow along together as we get on board today's flight. Unfortunately, my GoPro is not recording as I thought when we were boarding, so instead I turned it on when I put it down on my seat. In any case, I shortly realized my mistake, and with priority boarding, we were still some of the very first people on board the plane, and I was able to have a look around the cabin. Today's flight had a couple significant points for me. For one thing, it was my first time flying coach on the Dreamliner. This is also my first time flying in economy on a transoceanic flight since 2012, when Grace and I were in the back of a British Airways 747. After that flight, I've always upgraded to at least premium economy for transoceanic travel. So while we'll take a better look at the seat in the air, will I be able to enjoy going back across an ocean in economy, even in this tight economy of a modern 787? Let's get in the air and find out. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome aboard our flight EY 7047. The service to Port Hornendale. Is it our boarding process? Uh, flight time is calculated with nine and a half hours, nine hours and 30 minutes. And uh, we're expecting a smooth flight. Nevertheless, unexpected turbulence can occur any time. We are about to uh, start our pushing in a few minutes. In the meantime, please make yourself comfortable and I wish you all a nice flight.
Now that we're in the air, let's take a look at today's seats. Row 21, J, G, and H. This is a fairly standard slimline design in the common 333 configuration found on almost every Dreamliner. Right in front of you, you will find the screen, which we'll explore in depth later. However, it does include a USB and a headphone input. Just below, you'll find a fairly standard single piece adjustable tray table with a single cup indentation and a rather non-generous mesh personal item pouch that already has a lot of airline items in it to start with. Standard legroom was okay, or you could pay more for more space seats, including these endless legroom exit row bulkhead seats. Under the seats, you'll find universal power outlets behind your knees. Between each seat, you'll find an armrest, which is sadly a standard rock-hard thin affair. The headrest features a nice branded cover, and thankfully it is fully adjustable with folding sides. Overhead, individual air vents are another thankful addition to the cabin under the spacious swing-away luggage bins. Interesting are the printed no-smoking signs. One thinks they are in such a conspicuous place for good reason. The overhead light can be turned on and off through the entertainment screen, as well as the call button. Recline is not especially generous, but given the short legroom, you really wouldn't want it to be, so you don't have to give up what little space you have. Sadly, as is too common with the Dreamliners, the wonderful large and uniquely electronically darkening windows were locked down to dark early and for the duration of the flight. Ladies and gentlemen, please sit back and we'll tell you everything you need to know about the service on board this Boeing 787 Dreamliner. We like drinks and shop day. First, you'll be served a meal together with a choice of drinks, followed by tea or coffee. Right before we land, the crew will deliver the second meal serving. For those of you who haven't pre-ordered anything, you're very welcome to order from our snack bar. The snack bar is situated on the screen right in front of you, and you may also order blankets and headsets from here. Just choose what you would like on the screen, and we'll bring it all to your seat. Let's take a good look at the entertainment screen, as most of your onboard experience will be found right here in this little space. From here, you of course have movies, and we'll go into that a little bit, as well as an excellent full function 3D flight tracker, and the aforementioned seat functions. But this also serves as your onboard menu for drinks and snacks, as well as even duty-free shopping. In economy, there are only two groups, those that pre-ordered meals and those that did not, given that our low fare ticket did not include meals, and three $40 pre-ordered meals would have cost $120 US dollars, I had a little trouble seeing airplane economy food being worth that kind of money. I figured we could do at least just as well or better with the in-flight snack menu, as Norwegian offers quite a few options for those passengers wanting to get a quick bite to eat. Just in case, we did bring on some food of our own from the airport, but for what it's worth, I did see our neighbors get the included meals, literally a choice between chicken and beef, and it looked about as average as you can imagine. I did laugh that the included beverage cart was catered with Pepsi products when the for purchase menu was stocked with Coca-Cola products. You never see both brands being served in the same place, so this really stood out to me. By going in our own for our food options, we ended up with a fairly impressive selection of items just a few button presses away. When you make your first purchase, you have the option for the flight attendant to open a tab so you don't have to hand over a credit card every time you want to get another item, and this was a nice way of doing things. I started off the flight today with my own eclectic meal of a hot breakfast sandwich, fresh fruit, Oreo cookies, and a beer. Overall, I found the prices fairly fair and the quality of food to be quite good. I also ordered an airline blanket of my own to keep for $6, which immediately went behind my back in the package as additional lumbar support. This actually worked quite well and was well worth the added comfort for the cost. I brought my own hotel slippers and some extra socks, and this also helped me settle in as well. Dine on demand is generally a feature reserved for business and first class cabins in the most modern aircraft on the sky. So I was a little afraid that the crews perhaps didn't have a great liking for this system being available here in economy. But our flight attendants couldn't have been more cheery about the entire thing all flight. Everything came out within five minutes of being ordered on the screen, even though meal service was still being wrapped up at the same time for others in the cabin. Back to that screen, and let's talk a little more about the entertainment. Here I really felt Norwegian lagged behind, even the selection I would expect to find on domestic flights in the US. The amount and the selection of both new releases and classics was lacking, and TV shows were definitely not binge-worthy with whole seasons, but instead just three random episodes of each show. As someone who enjoys sitting back for a good movie marathon on a long flight, I really felt this was inadequate for long-haul travel. Norwegian is touting free international Wi-Fi access, but at the time I took this flight, our aircraft had not yet been outfitted with that service. 
One last little point, I did find the animated style of characters on the safety card to be a bit funny. A bit later in the flight, my crew was feeling a bit peckish, so we ordered some more drinks, a salad, and nuts. The salad again was quite fresh and generous in size. Then it was time for a lavatory break, and here you will find a pretty standard affair. Well, I couldn't believe somebody had the audacity to graffiti scratch the mirror. What the heck is wrong with people? Whether it's a cutting edge airplane, a business, public space, or a thousand year old artifact, the need of some to deface for their own entertainment is lost on me entirely. That is, however, still not an excuse that later throughout the flight, the lavatories themselves were not kept very clean by the crew. We're a bit over halfway through the flight now, and we head back over land in Northern Canada. I felt like a little pick-me-up and ordered a cappuccino and a packet of salted caramel biscuits. The foamy Nespresso concoction that I was brought certainly did not come out of an espresso machine, but I enjoyed it more than I expected and it went perfect with the biscuits. Do be warned, shortly after this, many of the fresh food items started running out. At least the menu itself is updated to reflect this, but if you wait until later in the flight to request something, beware that it may run out. Every time I ordered something, I felt like the service was faster than I expected it to be, and the whole idea of getting what you felt like, when you felt like, was a good bit of fun and a distraction from the over nine hours strapped to a thin and tight seat. Maybe after doing this several times, the novelty would wear off, but this came away to me as likely my favorite part of today's flight. Shortly after, it was announced that the buy on board was closing, so the crew could move on to pre-arrival duties. Our tab automatically closed out, and we ended up ordering 30 items for $59.50 US. That was just under half of what pre-order meals would have cost us, and this was a lot more fun. Plus, there were many selections we didn't even get to try, like instant noodles. Finally, the cabin lights were brought up, and the window brightness was unlocked, so we could begin to acclimate for our late afternoon arrival back into Fort Lauderdale International Airport. I'll give my closing thoughts in here in the air today, as we had a busy time with customs and immigration and a long drive home after we landed. Overall, made a pretty comfortable trip. I enjoyed orders of eggs off the stack menu there, how past the time. And, you know, it's my first, my first transatlantic uh, crossing with coach since probably like 2012. So, overall, I survived it pretty well. But overall, it was just a comfortable way to go. As a quick update for you, I shared in the start of my premium economy review. About Norwegians pre and post COVID issues operationally, and I'm happy to report, as of the publication of this video, they are indeed taking reservations again on the Dreamliner as planned for spring of 2021 travel. I do hope that their long haul operations do resume on schedule and with great success. And I would definitely fly Norwegian again under the right circumstance and pricing. Come back again soon for more flight reviews here at Gilbert Travels. In the meantime, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you can be made aware when more content is available. Thanks for watching. <laughs>